Hello, welcome to your 2018 New Year of the Dog Predictions. If you want to get straight to your reading, feel free to skip past this intro. So as an update, I haven't posted to my channel for the past couple of months because I moved over the holidays and I took January to unpack and comfortably settle into my new place. I am excited to say that I'm now able to begin posting monthly forecast videos again. So this month of February has already been a very active month. I'm filming these videos on the day of the Chinese New Year ushered in today on February 16th, which really comes at an advantageous time of change this year. This is because directly following Valentine's Day, we had the new moon solar eclipse in Aquarius on the 15th. We had already experienced the full moon lunar eclipse on January 31st. Eclipses happen twice a year and they come in pairs two weeks apart. They tend to bring shifts in our life circumstances, which is a necessary function in order to grow and move forward. Sometimes these changes can be interpreted as being sudden or unexpected. However, really most likely they are the result of a longer term sort of underlying energy that has come to a culminating point of manifestation. And that is brought out at this time of the eclipses. So in this reading, we will be looking at the tarot to show the energetic focal point of the solar eclipse for your sign after the yearly predictions. So 2018 is the year of the earth dog. Earth has qualities of being effectively communicative, serious, and responsible in work. And the dog makes a loyal companion to friends, family, colleagues, and lovers. Overall this year, we will experience themes of trust in our associations, as well as the ability to draw in true friends and reliable partners. Dog energy gives honesty and fair actions. It can bring popularity in social circles. It lends advice and help to others and can fix bad habits or bad associations. For these video forecasts, I want to draw cards for the entirety of the new year, separate from the more immediate concentrated energy of the solar eclipse. So I will be doing these readings in two parts, each with a different focus. These, of course, are general readings based upon either your sun, moon, or ascendant. So if you would like a personalized reading, please contact me through my website, sungoddessashley.com. Okay, so let's get started with your readings. Leo, let's see what the year of the dog has in store for you. So for this, I'm using the Connolly Tarot and also drawing from the medicine cards and the secret language of color cards. So for the Year of the Dog predictions, I'm going to draw 12 cards, one for each month, including January, although it's already passed, and February as well. So show me the energy for Leo. Okay. The year 2018. The year look like for Leo. Okay, interesting. You've had the same card right off the bat for um, the Cancer video. So the Four of Cups for January, Queen of Cups, Two of Cups. Wow, lots of cups. Eight of Pentacles, the Tower, the Emperor, Nine of Wands, Seven of Pentacles. Okay. Okay, so it's a it's a blend this year of ups and downs. Okay. So the six of pentacles to me also feels like it's going to um you're going to have help when you need it. You're going to be of service to others. It feels like a very service-oriented thing. There's lots of people around you. I also see something special with this card. It's like this woman wants to get this guy's attention. 
Um, I feel as though there is more than one person looking at, okay, I'm just getting something very specific. I have to start with this card. So you're in a social situation sometime this year. Um, three, four, five, six. I'm thinking either the sixth month because it's the sixth card or somewhere right around here fairly soon. Um, you're in a social situation. There's somebody that catches your attention. However, somebody else also is looking at this person that you're looking at. And it feels like a flirtation, it feels like an attraction, or just someone that you feel like you need to know that would be important for you to know, either for your career or what have you. Um, I see some sort of encounter, and there's a couple of other people who are seeing the situation happen between the three of you. And I know this is very specific, but I just felt like I, I should share a lot of energy of this card since it came up. I don't really use this deck too often I, I normally use the Rider weight. It has different Im imagery, but there's also other people that are completely oblivious to what's happening. So I see some sort of a, like a love triangle and I'm seeing that for January here. So maybe this energy has already happened. Um, love is usually cups. I'm seeing a triangle of them together. There is um, another cup coming in. That's the hope with this card is that there's always more to be had even if something is not going exactly the way you wanted it to. February looks good. You're the Queen of Cups. You may be extra sensitive this this month though. Um, it does feel like you're also playful. There's like a dolphin here. Um, the playfulness is kept on a short leash. I'm seeing like a rope there. So you're allowing yourself some play but you're mostly feeling pretty sensitive is what I'm seeing. Um, you're hoping for love. You're wanting love. You're sipping out of love's cup. Um, really getting very in touch with your feminine goddess divine power and um, not just being attractive on the outside but feeling it is going to be important um, for you Leo just to sort of embody that feel that get more in touch with that this month um, and I do see a relationship coming so it's almost like you can psychically prepare yourself for this it does feel like some of you met somebody January you're sort of feeling yourself in that role of the of the um, person in the relationship here. And then it sort of happens and it, it's sort of, but I'm seeing the progression of it sort of growing. There's one cup, it's being handed to you, you're not holding it. Now you're sharing that cup. You're still holding the cup, you're sharing it with someone else. So this is now mutual. <clears throat> okay. Something is happening within uh, relationships for you at the beginning here. Then I see you're working. I just see you like, okay, you're like, I'm just going to sort of see how this goes. Now I'm going to focus my attention over here on work. Pentacles to me is always like the tasks that we have to do. I see you um, be getting a lot accomplished and um, being very productive. And um, it looks like something that you're good at, something that you've done for a while, something you enjoy doing here in April. Um, May, you've got the tower. So this would shake things up a bit um, for you. If you want some excitement, I feel like here it is in May. And, you know, as, as far as like the cards that are surrounding the tower to sort of sh tell me what, how it's going to be affecting you, it's something that is fairly routine, something that you're used to. You get, you either get cut a break from that or you cut something out, or you get cut. What I'm hearing is cut. Um, but you could also, like, um, this could be your big break, or, you, you know, you make the cut in some way. Very, I'm getting that message. So the emperor is, you know, usually the person in charge. It's the boss. It's also, um, if you were married, it would be the husband, or if you have children, it would be the father. Um... So the emperor, again, is the person in charge. I'm seeing if I pick up anything else. Usually the emperor is pretty serious, but this person feels really non-threatening. I'm seeing a lot of the tulips around it, which indicates spring. Um, something is springing up, um, blooming. And actually, I feel like the emperor is sort of reaping the dividends in, se in some sense. He's very well dressed. He's got all of his green around him. Also wearing this, it's a different person, but I'm seeing the green robe and I'm seeing the way that it's styled here. 
is uh, very similar. So I see this as being the same character, even though there looks like two different people. Um, I see that there is some unease around the emperor. Okay, either the emperor's role in your life or you being the emperor um, and sort of reaping the dividends. Either way, it just looks like, you know, you're kind of like wanting to sort of um, protect uh, your accomplishments, your achievements, your love, whatever that is. It looks like you're going in protective mode, okay? Making sure that things are um, land in order, especially if things sort of get shaken up. It's like you're wanting to put together all the pieces and order them as they're falling. That's sort of the image that I'm getting. Okay, so then we have August. I love the act, the non-action of this card. It's just how do you describe something that's sort of dull and somewhat boring? Um, that's the way that I would describe it. Actually, no drama is good drama, <laughs> I suppose. It looks like the clouds are very clear. It's like things are very still. And I, I did mention you know, something getting shaken up, wanting to put the pieces in order and in alignment. I see you have everything lined up here then. It's like you've sort of swept up the pieces. You could be sweeping up the pieces from somebody else's mistake at work, from your own mistake at work. It doesn't necessarily have to be a mistake, but it's something that gets disorganized in the work context, okay? Um, or even in any other context, really. It's just an or disorganization that you put back together. And I see you're like, sort of, you're like, okay, we now have things put under control. Strength card. I always see this as your card, Leo, um, being that this card is represented by Leo. There's a lion here and a maiden. Um, I do see the solid wall, brick wall coming up here it's the foundation of it it's not the entire thing it's just like the the foundation is giving you sort of a platform getting a lot of like performance themes which makes sense because leo does they make good entertainers performers but i'm getting like the stage here and i'm seeing like the crowd okay um either way i feel like this is again pride and accomplishments a job well done you're feeling good about your talents. You're, you're showing your strengths in your talents. Being bold and courageous enough to use them. And I feel like you've done that. Okay. So this feels like good inner and outer harmony. Okay. All right. So then in October, you've got like a windfall of messages coming towards you. Emails, communications, text messages, conversations. It looks like that's going to be very active in October. Um, you've got sort of things just sort of flying in. Um, so that's something you're trying to spell it out. You're trying to figure it out. Hmm. I kind of see what I actually see within this sort of cluster of wands coming in. Usually I see them in alignment, like in the right or weight, they're all lined up and it's like a, like a, but it almost looks like jumbled sentences or poor grammar or something like that. Are we having a Mercury retrograde um, in October? Something like that has that sort of energy of like something is jumbled in the communication that you're receiving. So if something is coming in and it's not making sense, it's not your fault it's the sender's fault for not really being clear so don't take responsibility for someone else's miscommunication i'm also hearing don't take responsibility for the way that things are interpreted you can have responsibility for the way that you send out information what the things that you say but you can't be responsible for how it's received okay so then november i'm getting oh no this isn't a good card as far as following the miscommunication leads to actual, um, this is why the details are so important. It looks like something is either confused, you know, or, you know, messed up and it leads to hurt feelings here. It's a miscommunication that leads to hurt feelings. <clears throat> okay. They say that, you know, a good, strong, com uh, communication, um, is sort of the, the cornerstone of, of good relationships. 
So um, it looks like a relationship difficulty here. Um, I see you in sort of a contemplation mode. It's not really going to phase you as far as your self-worth. Um, I do see that you're sort of still fine without this person in your life or without the drama or you're, you're still fine on your own. It's sort of their problem to sort out. It is a, has affected you, but it's affecting them more is what I'm sort of seeing here. Okay. So I do want to pull a color card for you. I thought this would be fun. Sort of see that color energy, the color theme for the year. Okay. Mm, yeah, it's this one. Azure. That reminds me of Azurite, which is actually, um, Azurite is a form of uh, malachite, like the oxidation process, I think before like copper or something, something like that. I'm not sure really about the metals, but um, I know that azurite comes from, um, uh, it's before it turns into malachite. So I'm seeing to wear or work with azurite, not just uh, the color, but also like the crystal. Um, protect yourself. I know that malachite's for serious protection as well. Okay, let's see what this is about. I'm getting the protection is like right here. Also right here, protecting your heart. Okay. I, I, I don't have these memorized, so I'm going to read from the book. It's, this part is short. So, Azure purifies your aura and strengthens your connection to the divine, leading you to discover your truth and empowering you to make important life choices. Immerse yourself with Azure rays to protect yourself from neg negative, dense energies and to find your center. Okay, so breathe in Azure rays of light to feel safe and secure, imagining an Azure bubble of light that surrounds and protects you. Say, I ask divine healing light to surround me with love, peace, and healing. Please bar any dense energy from entering my space and affecting me. Thank you. Do this for yourself and your loved ones whenever you would like some added protection. I see you being in crowds this year. And it's possible that, again, I sort of mentioned picking up someone else's energy, how it really affects them, but it's also affecting you, more so them than you. Um, so again, like those energetic boundaries, I'm seeing that here, I'm seeing that here. Being around people, you absorb their stuff. So, okay. Um, let's draw a, let's see, I turn this around, a medicine card. So since it's the year of the dog, I, um, it's animal themed, and I wanted to then pull a medicine card to find out the animal totem for you this year. I figured that would be an appropriate message. I think spider just sort of jumped out, so we're going to go with that. Spider, I know one thing is about clothing. It's about language. Clothing is how you present yourself and how you speak through your body. Spider is about the written language, vocabulary words, also communication, misunderstandings, things like that at the end of the year that affect you. Let's go ahead and read about this part. And if you don't want to sit through this, I will be pulling the eclipse cards. Uh, for that energy, so feel free to fast forward. So this starts off with a poem, Spider, weaving webs of delight, weave me with a peaceful world, carrying creation in your web, waiting to be unfurled. So it's about weaving. That's the key word, theme word is weaving. Spider wove the web that brought humans the first picture of the alphabet. The letters were part of the angles of her web. Deer asked Spider what she was weaving and why all the lines looked like symbols. Spider replied, why dear, it's time for Earth's children to learn to make records of their progress in their Earth walk. Deer answered Spider, but they have already have pictures that show through symbols the stories of their experiences. 
Yes, Spider said, but Earth's children are growing more complex and their future generations will need to know more. The ones who, oh, the ones who come won't remember how to read the petroglyphs. So it was that spider wove the first primordial alphabet as she had woven the dream of the world that had become to manifest. Spider's dream of the physical world had come to fruition millions of years before. Spider's body is made like the number eight, consisting of two lobe-like parts connected at the waist and eight legs. Spider is the symbol for infinite possibilities of creation. Her eight legs represent the four winds of change and the four directions on the medicine wheel. The spider weaves the webs of fate for those who get caught in her web and become her dinner. This is similar to humans who get caught in the web of illusion in the physical world and never see beyond the horizon into the other dimensions. The web of fate also represents a wheel of life, which does not include any alternatives or solutions. It is typically human who get caught up in the polarity of good or bad fortune without realizing that we can change it at any time. If we are not decisive enough about changing our lots in life, we may end up being consumed by our fears and limitations. Spider is the female energy of the creative force that weaves the beautiful designs of life. Her web has hundreds of intricate patterns which catch in the morning dew. As Spider has dropped from her web into your cards today, she may be telling you to create, create, create. Look for new alter alternatives to your present impasse. She can also be warning that you are coming too close to an entangling situation. Spider could be asking you to use a journal to write out and review your progress. If you do this, you will not forget how you are creating a new or different phase in your life. Spider brings a message of a different kind when she sees you becoming a bit too involved in the weaving of your life plans to notice opportunities at the outskirts of your web. If this is the case, Spider gets your attention so that you notice something you have woven has borne fruit. Congratulations. Spider caught you just in time before you missed the opportunity on the edge of your web or reality. The most important message from Spider is that you are an infinite being who will continue to weave the patterns of life living throughout time. Do not fail to see the expansiveness of the eternal plan. You know what? I'm really glad that I read that because I picked up a few more things that I wanted to relate to your cards. Um, first of all, that was wonderful and I'm glad that it illustrated all of those points very well. Um, I do feel like it highlighted some of the things that I said here. One of them is about not missing an opportunity. Okay. So there are some things in life where we can sort of side choose to sidestep our destiny or the good things that we have coming to us. And I feel like there was like a narrow escape with that in January. And now you are sort of living your purpose. You're owning that power, that creative power that the queen of cups has. So also with the spider, with language, she kept mentioning the web. To me, that is the World Wide Web. When she was talking about how humans um, needed to learn language because future generations needed to know more, we have actually the surge of information used from the World Wide Web that may or may not be true things. And we're sort of confused on what reality is or what the facts are. Anybody can cop and paste information from pages and it just sort of perpetuates um, half truths, half stories, like just lazy or inaccurate information. Seems like we have more information, but less wisdom, less knowledge, and really the truth is sort of getting buried beneath um, too much information, really. And I do get the sense of like children growing up um, on the computer, being raised by websites. And that's not something that we've had historically. Um, I feel like it is a tool to be used, but in a sense that's going to leave a positive impact on the world and not sort of numb the minds of the masses. One other thing that I, two other things I did um, read that sort of sparked my um, imagination to connect this, or I guess intuition to connect this, was about jumbled communication here. You know, there's this really, um, obviously everyone knows now that if you wanna say something important, 
um, to a lover or a friend or a boss or someone, something that's an important, something important that you want to communicate. Obviously, texting is not the best way to do that. And I see falling into that trap of the spider's web may be a temptation here in November and December, and it has consequences for doing that. So again, being clear using language in person, getting someone on the phone even is better than texting. So I am seeing to look out for that. I'm also seeing something about being performance-based is something that I kept seeing. And there's something that you're going to be proving to yourself um, <clears throat> that you're sort of afraid to do. Again, sort of that theme of like sidestepping your fate. I see you sort of being afraid to do that in July. September, I see you actually stepping up to the plate and it's like you're then on stage to perform not necessarily in a traditional like theater sense, but either it's on the World Wide Web where you're set, literally setting the stage and you have an audience. That's something that you're afraid to do in, in July. Some of you Leos may do it. Some definitely most of us, if we haven't done it here, then we're going to be doing it here. Okay, so this is what I see for the new year. That was fun. So I want to then draw some cards um, now that we have an idea of what the year will look like for your sign. Let's focus on the energy of the eclipses. Okay, so two cards will be for the lunar and solar eclipse. And then I'm also going to be looking at a card of what energy you can bring in with you to March. All right, so show me the energy for Leo as I integrate the energy of Leo and concentrate it into the eclipses. What just happened? Lunar, solar. Lunar, solar. Mm -hmm. So the lunar eclipse... Okay, so obviously communication in the World Wide Web, it's already coming up for you. Um, putting out your ideas. I see these birds, which usually represent communication of all types. Um, they're the messengers. They, they're they bringing, it's like you're playing fetch. So it's like when I'm seeing you throw a ball out, but instead of a dog catching it, it's the, <clears throat> it's the communication online. And it's coming back to you. You're getting the response back and then you're throwing it out again. You're getting the response back. So anything that you're using for communication from home or from work, and it just looks like you're very, you're getting more comfortable in what you're doing here. That's something is taking flight here. And I like seeing that. Um, you're moving from a two to a three. It is a different element, but I do see progress. So you move from fire to um, earth. So you're putting, you're getting the practical, practical dividends from your words. It's like you're creating magic um, of abundance through your words and it's coming back to you in a solid form. So I, I like seeing this for you as well. Doesn't look too extreme for the eclipse energies. Um, it does look like you already, are, you like the underlying energy of the sort of extreme or intense energy would be the soul searching that it took for you to get here. Okay. So I do, this is a soul searching card. You're sort of looking for um, what is lacking in your life and you're willing to have the courage and be brave enough to actually explore that and go find it. So I see that's the energy of what you're bringing into uh, March with you. And I want to go ahead and end on a lover's oracle card message since Valentine's Day had just passed and we also had the solar eclipse uh, with Venus. So what is the love message? Just a simple message to cap off your reading. Lots of them are bouncing. It is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. So some of you may be going through cycles of letting go of old loves and bringing in new loves. See, love is being very an important theme for you um, now. 
and I was seeing at the beginning of the of this year for the first few months. <clears throat> okay, Leo, I hope this was um, helpful and useful and entertaining. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like. If you like the content of my channel, feel free to subscribe. I will see you in the upcoming videos. Until then, take care and be well.